Howdy y'all, it's Jordan Smith. We're out here in beautiful Huntsville, Alabama at the CBS Trust Plant where they're using MyTech automation and software to make a modern day truss. So what is a truss? A truss is an assembly that is made out of two force members that are attached here at the nodes. So what I mean by a two force member is all of these these web sections and these cords are only in compression and tension. So this is my top cord here, this is my bottom cord running along the bottom there, and then all of this in the middle is web. So let's imagine that we have a force pressing down at the top here, and we've got two walls holding it up at either end. So the, the walls are pressing up and our force is pressing down. These members here are going to be in compression because I've got the wall pushing this way and the, my load pushing this way and it's offset by this side over here so there's no twisting or bending moments at these nodes. You can imagine those as just a pin that can move back and forth. We want to keep everything in compression or tension. So these would be in compression which means my bottom cord here is going to be in tension. So compression, tension, this would be in compression, this would be in tension, this would be in compression, tension and so forth. So in 1955, a guy named John Calvin Jurette invented this. This is the truss plate. It is a piece of metal that has a bunch of little spikes that are pressed out of it, and then they're pressed together and rolled over. That is the process that I want to show you inside. So to help tell the story in the easiest way possible, I'm just going to walk you through what a builder goes through and how to get the trusses designed, and then I'm going to take it through from what the wood goes through, and then the builder and the wood are going to meet up at the end with the full trusses on a truck and heading out the door. What my tech allows us to do is for me as a builder to come in and say, here is my two-dimensional sketch. I'm able to show them what I want in the plans, and they build that in their 3D software called Sapphire. Now Sapphire has a ton of different modules, but for me as a builder, all I care about is the Sapphire 3D viewer because the designers will draw up the whole house based off of my sketch. They'll also be able to throw in all of the different engineering requirements from code and other factors like wind load in my area. So they designed this whole thing in 3D. They designed all of the trusses based off of my roof planes, off of my wall heights, off of my floor plan. And then they send it to me and right off my cell phone, I can look at that, I can manipulate it and I can see, is this what I'm expecting? And if it's not, I'm able to call my local lumber yard, Wilson Lumber here, sit down with the designer and say, okay, here, here and here, I would like to make these changes because I just talked to my HVAC guy and we're running uh, and we're running a HVAC chase through these trusses. Can you open up the web so I can run that through? It's a really great way of customizing. And so now, just like I talked to my framer, instead of talking directly to my framer about what customization I want, I'm talking to a designer and we're both able to see it in real time and I'm able to see it out on, the, out on my job on my cell phone. All right, so as a builder, I'm happy. I've handed it off, the 3D model is built, and I leave to go on to my next job. Now, that 3D model here at the trust plant then goes to a Sapphire management software. It doesn't affect me as a builder, but for the trust guys, it makes a big difference because now they take that 3D model and they put it in their schedule and they know exactly when it's going to get out to the floor and when it's going to be delivered back to me, the builder. So from the management software, once it's scheduled, then it hits the floor and all of that information on all of the sticks that it takes to build all of these trusses goes out to the floor and everything is automated. So it starts at the saws. MyTech makes a few different types of saws. They make one called the blade and it's a three axis miter saw, just like maybe your DeWalt sliding saw, but everything is automated on it. And it's not a operator sitting in there putting in all the angles. It knows the entire truss that is coming down the, the way and it will cut both to length and all of your angles in real time and spit it out the back saw. They also make one called Cyber AT, which is my favorite. It's got six heads on it and all six heads are articulating. So it's cutting both ends of the lumber with up to three angles per end so that this lumber just comes through and both ends are cut ready to go to the truss. And then both of those saws will print on the pieces of material so that as it comes off, the guy stacking it there and is making a bundle for the truss. So we have complete material traceability. And because we're able to use 
the long pieces for the long trusses and as it gets shorter and shorter we also have the same type of saw making floor trusses we're able to utilize most of the material here there's very little waste coming out of this plant after it's been all cut and bundled together it goes over to the tables now again this is one of the disadvantages of traditional truss making you set up your table for a single type of truss and it takes a long time to switch over now with the automated jigging systems called wizard pds the pins will move so the new truss comes in they see it on a screen all of the pins move and then you're able to throw the material down up against those pins that are your new jig you tap the plates on it with a hammer and then you have a roller that rolls over the top doing a it's a two-step process you have the main roller that rolls over the top that sets all of the plates and then it gets kicked off onto a conveyor roller that rolls it through a finishing roller and then it comes out here to the yard. It is a really cool process that is cutting down the time of making trusses. They're able to get 9,000 board feet off of their automated table where the best they could do with a manual table with their best crew was 5,000 board feet. So they were able to double their production. This means two things for me, the builder. Number one, it gets more economical to build, uh, especially roof and floor structures, much more economical than, than hand cut frames. The second thing that it does is it allows me to customize very easily because these pins are moving individually. It's as fast for me to do one truss as it is to do a hundred trusses. So if I'm a custom home builder and I'm wanting to make you know, one home all with trusses for the roof and floor sections, I can do that easily and it doesn't cost me any more money and it doesn't cause CBS any more setup time because everything is automated. It's a really cool system and it's changing the way that we're building trusses. And finally, all of those trusses are stacked together, bundled together. They hit a truck and they all go out to the job site together. So what would take days or maybe weeks of framing on site has now been reduced to, you know, a day of flying these trusses in. So if you're a subscriber to the channel, you know that I am a big proponent of high-end craftsmanship and master craftsmen. There's nothing that I love more than somebody who's very skilled at their trade. And I'm not trying to say that trusses should or can replace skilled framers. What I'm saying is that I think that it should be a tool that master framers keep in their pocket to do even better higher end work at a more affordable price so that we can do it for more people and have a bigger market of good quality homes instead of just sending it out to the soulless track built homes that are done at the lowest possible dollar. Hey guys, as you can see, I'm running out of light so I'm gonna to have to wrap this up, but this plant is not shutting down. They're running 24 hours a day to get this stuff out. They are crushing it, doing great work over here at CBS and Wilson Lumber. Huge thanks to my tech for sending Joey and I out here to film this. It's always cool to see what other people do and to get into the weeds of how they do it. Comment below if there's any questions that I didn't have a chance to answer in this video. Comment below on what you think about trusses. Do you love them? Do you hate them? Where do you see the future of building going? Subscribe if we've earned it and go follow me over at Instagram at Jordan Smith Builds. And we'll see you next time on The Build Show.